Have you seen some of these posts? You're fine up these Yankee fans. You had one with David Cohn. Yeah, yeah. Yes, network broadcaster, former Yankee. That was from Yankee Fan Festival from 94, 95. I actually had a ton of those pictures. Still have them. I have pictures with Jim Leyritz, Kenny Rogers, Paul O'Neill. But the Cohn one was just too good. Had to put it up there. The Cone one was cool because you could tell the jewelry in your face taking that photo, and it was yeah. one of your favorite players. Yeah, at that time, the players felt less accessible, I think, than they do now. So, like, when you see like one of your idols like that, you're kind of like frozen in the moment. But I was like so excited. I just remember that. You're getting a chance to see a lot of former Yankees. What's that been like? Just that entire experience of seeing some of your idols. And like next thing you know, you're getting dressed next to him. It's crazy. Uh, you know, you got Pettit walking around, Soriano, Reggie, just like a lot of people that obviously I grew up knowing about or watching or going to the stadium and watching. They're, they're a little bit different than other like older players that I've met in the past, like with other teams. Since those are guys that I really grew up watching and rooting for, like I'm kind of semi starstruck by them. So I just like say hi, shake hand, but that's about it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> the Babe Ruth comment, which you said yeah. during the offseason, and I think you're on any and every show yep. that week afterwards. Defending it. <laughs> <laughs> From a marketing standpoint, yeah. if I see somebody who says that, and if I'm the GM, I'm like, wow, I want to go out and get that guy. Oh, Is really? That, yes, yeah. that's that's confidence right there, man. And I know that the context well, that you said it in, yeah. but like, I want that player on my team. Well, there was some writer who wrote some article saying that that's the exact reason the Yankees shouldn't sign me, because I am I got bad juju from that, <laughs> which made me laugh. And then I was like, yeah, maybe they won't, like, that would be terrible. But no, um, he was a baseball player, mm -hmm. great player, a legendary player from a really long time ago. Definitely probably the wrong guy to use in that example I was trying to make about what I was talking about. but. That being said, like it's kind of been funny to see the reaction to it. I even saw that MLB The Show 19, they have like me facing Babe Ruth in the trailer. <laughs> so it's kind of running away for running away from me a little bit, but you know, more people know who I am because of it. Should have been marketing. Yeah. Should have been marketing. <laughs> yeah. Viral marketing. <laughs> On social media, you do a great job with photos and videos, and it's very, very impressive the type of content that you do put out. It's very high quality. You do a killer job at that. Well, thank you. I just think, like, with Instagram for me, like, when I first got it, it felt like a game to me. Like, and it really, I was already taking a lot of pictures, but I was like, wow, now I can like post and see how good I can get each photo. And I used to basically try to get one great photo a day. And now it's slowed down quite a bit since then, but still like, I don't like to put anything up that isn't like representative of my standards. And so uh, that's kind of the way I approach it. Like, I just want to do good work in whatever I'm doing. Some of the Ariel shots that you have, you almost want to put them in a frame and throw them yeah. up on your wall. Well, yeah, thank you, but um, yeah, no, there are some that we've earmarked for that we want to keep and like make sure that have the files and get them printed and all that. Just because a couple times like I got really lucky and got something great and you know I don't want to lose that because of like a memory card malfunction or a hard drive crash or something like that. And all the photography over the last several years, a lot of the impetus for it is like going a lot of cool places, playing in this in majors and then you know having this crazy life and I just don't want to forget any of it. So trying to make sure I documented that in some way. One of those spots was out in San Francisco mm -hmm. when you're playing the Giants and you have this great photo. It's right over McCovey Cove and it shows right yeah. field. That was very impressive. Thank that you. That was cool. And again, that's another place that baseball brought you to. Yeah, so the backstory behind that one, and it's funny because every picture has a backstory, right? But like the backstory behind that was I was on an off day and a couple years ago I started going into the field on off days just to get a little workout in and feel like, like a little more accomplished so I could then relax the rest of the day. So on that particular day, like, I went and talked to the clubhouse manager who was there, and I said, hey, like, can I fly my drone? And he's like, no, but if I were you, I'd just go and do it. <laughs> he's like, you'll be fine, because there's nobody here. So I took the risk and rolled the dice, and, but it got a great picture, and I was up and down, Amazing like, in three up. minutes, so I was pumped about that. When you had Tommy John surgery, yeah. the 16 weeks after, you actually documented that using yep. a GoPro. Yep. And one of the things that really sticks out about that video is that a lot of people hear about Tommy John surgery, they know about it, but they don't actually see what happens behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And you did a great job at documenting that and showing that to people. Thanks. 
Yeah, for that, I mean, I didn't know what I, what I was gonna get out of it. I remember as soon as I got the surgery, being on the plane and thinking, man, like I really like should have documented how nervous I was the night before and the, the immediate aftermath, but I did it and being kind of bummed about it and being like, you know what, I'm just gonna start now because my rehab starts basically tomorrow when I get into Colorado. So that's what I did. And I just took a couple of clips every day, like basically detailing what I was doing over time. And every day, give me a little side project. So I would go home and edit a little bit, add, add something, edit it, add something, edit it, you know? And I just felt like the vibe of it was like this lonely vibe that a lot of people don't realize how lonely you are. And it's like such a mental battle to like get back. So that's kind of what I wanted to portray in the video. Looking back, how fortunate are you to be in this situation and have gotten to this point? Because a lot of people have Tommy John surgery and sometimes that's it. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, uh, it's not just the injuries. It's just baseball in general is, is a short lived thing. I'm 33 now, I signed when I was 20. So, you know, I'm not a math major, but that's 13 or 14 years, depending on how you look <laughs> at it. And you just don't know how that's gonna happen. And everybody that I came up playing with, for the most part, I stopped playing except for a few guys. And so I just feel fortunate to have been through a lot of ups and downs performance wise, but also injury wise, and to still be going and doing what I love to do. And you give a lot of credit towards the lab that you got in Harlem. For me, it was more of like a place that you can go and work on your, on your craft and not be on anybody else's time. The beautiful thing about the lab situation is that I could go any time of the day. I could go in the middle of the night when I have the itch and I don't have to rely on other people's schedules and I had like a target and a bucket of balls. I could do my throwing and I don't need a partner and I can go get my mind, my mind right there. And then at the same time, it's a place that you can open up to friends and to other people who have shared goals and try to use it as um, you know a great resource for them to get better so all of the technology stuff like that's just me embracing any possibility of a way to get better so I was willing to do that um, but for me just having the space was the most unique thing I'd never been in a situation like that before where like I had something that was my own and I could use it as I wanted you open it up to people who are in a similar situation and like-minded people. Baseball is an art form. It's something that you're always working towards. No matter what level you're at, there's always time that you can improve on things. And so I just wanted to create an atmosphere of like, everybody's kind of on equal footing here. Everybody's working towards getting a little better. And this is a place where you can be yourself and have fun. And there's not any critical like eye on you except for helping each other out. But the whole secret like lab part of it is kind of funny because there is a bus station right outside. <laughs> and there are people sometimes like what's going on in there. And I love that aspect of it, that it's something happening in, in a place that you wouldn't expect. So the original lab location will be no more. It's probably going to end up being a Chipotle or a or an escalator down to an underground shop, right? But I still want to continue to train the same way and continue to try to find a, a, a place somewhere and make the lab 2.0 and basically try to keep it around because I think it's a good thing and a useful thing. And for me, and if I want to be my best, I actually think I kind of need something like that. Italian. Love it. What's the go-to dish? Veal parm. Veal parm. Yeah. Do you make it yourself? No, but I, I mean, I, I, maybe I could, but generally no, I <laughs> just the veal to the professionals. I don't have the full accent, but I, you know, on some stuff, calamar, mozzarella, capicola, mortadella, like ricotta cheese, people will say like ricotta, <laughs> and you're like, I don't think that's spelled that way, but. Where's the H? Yeah. <laughs> Your last name. Yeah. Being from the area, being number zero, it seems like there's a lot of potential for a sweet nickname. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'd be curious to see if what, what what else comes up down the pike, but every male in my family has always ended up being an auto at some point, and that's been me for a while now. And people just get comfortable calling me O or auto. People come up with funny stuff around the number zero, but we'll see what they we'll see what they come up with. I like the number zero. Seen it so far in the jersey. Looks pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't know what it looks like because I can't see my back, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's there. But I'm sure everybody lets you know that you're number zero. Yeah, so many people are like, oh, I just can never get used to that. Never can never get used to seeing that. But I always forget about it. <laughs>